And hello and welcome to my Facebook page and to my monthly Go Creative workshop, which is for people who run a creative business, want to run a creative business. And I define that as anybody who is making a business out of a passion um, uh, or a sense of mission or a sense of purpose. So it doesn't have to be something that's traditionally in, considered the creative arts. You may be a coach, you may be a counsellor, you may be an activist, you may be a mover and shaker of a kind we don't even know about yet. Um, but the point is that you are a creative soul and that you are not primarily or exclusively motivated by profit that it's really important to you, the content of what you do and how you do it also from a creative perspective. So hi, Suzanne, uh, good to see you here. No, you're not late. I was a tiny bit late because um, a few people are, seem to be having difficulty knowing how to get in here. It's great if you're used to Facebook Live and you know what to do. It's as simple as just turn up the page and hop on in. But um, when people don't know what to do, it's like everything. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. So hi, Julie. Good to see you. Um, uh, yeah, this month um, we're going to be sort of taking a leap forward. So the last few months have been very much about laying the foundation, understanding some basics, thinking about what we mean when we're talking about going creative, what we mean when we're talking about creative block for ourselves, the various ways in which we can become blocked, the various aspects and dimensions of a creative business. And um, sorry, can you just hold for one second? I see somebody else who's having trouble getting in. Um, yeah, sorry, just let me get them sorted the author page um yeah so this month we're going to be uh, digging in uh really getting started into the nitty-gritty over the next four months we will be unpacking um what we mean by creative business and you'll be doing exercises now which will uh, uh, apply some of the creative principles and also some creative practices which are really going to get you going so thank you for your patience and understanding the need to lay down the foundation because all the business talk that we're coming across all over the place is, of course, so conventional and so mechanical very often. It's often done by people who are not creative. They don't understand how we think. They give us advice and we kind of run off and take it thinking that they know better. But actually, it doesn't always suit us at all. We can waste a lot of time on this. Hi, Rana. Hi, Susan. Hi, Howard. Great to see you here. So, yeah, just a little rundown on, on how it works for those who haven't attended one of these before. They're super easy. If you, It's really your opportunity. Everything that I'm talking about here is based on the books that are coming out um, in October and on the blog posts that have been coming out forever that some of you are very familiar with. But the workshop is your opportunity to really think about your business and how these principles apply because... Every creative is completely different and uh, every business also is completely different, though you wouldn't think so to listen to some business gurus. Um, and But particularly, I think, creative business. And the whole idea, of course, is that you create a U-shaped business, that you build something around yourself that is a reflection of you, um, but also is satisfying a need in somebody else. Because if you're not actually meeting somebody's need, then you're not really in business, you're just having fun. So, which is good, but it's just not business. Um, Howard's going to lurk, he tells us, until it's time to pick up his voice. That is absolutely fine, lurk away. We have people who who just listen and, and don't say anything. But if you do want to make a comment, that's what the comment box is there for. And if you do have specific questions about the stuff that's coming up as, it's coming, as I'm talking about it, please do ask questions. As I was saying there, this is your opportunity to explore your own business in terms of principles. And as we begin now to really dig down into those principles and practices, 
uh, you know, you're going to need to do that because there's no point in thinking about it too generally. You need to actually think about it at a in a very specific way. So quick sort of um, introduction to what today is going to be about. Hi, Debbie. Hi, JJ. Great to have you here. Um, we're just on the introduction. So in a moment, I'll recap what I talked about last time for those of you who weren't here. Um, we looked at the various ways in which you can be blocked. Now, all of these workshops are on my Facebook page. If you have missed one or if you hear me talking about something that sounds relevant to you, all you have to do is scroll back a bit and you'll find it or go into events and you'll find it there quite easily. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about uh, the various forms of cre creative block very briefly, just to recap on what we talked about last week. And then we'll be looking at how, today about how you actually tackle these. Um, and we begin with a practice that any of you who have been to a live workshop with me and any of you who've been hanging around for any length of time will have heard me banging on about before, the most magical technique in the whole universe. We don't use it half enough, free writing. So we will be writing today if you don't have pen and paper please do go and grab. Hi, Caroline, you're very welcome. Your first time. Um, I was just saying to get some pen and paper if you don't have it, and please use the contact um, the comment form to make contact and ask questions. Hi, Mick Rooney, old friend, haven't seen you for ages. And Sonia has a question already. Can you offer advice on how to promote my site? It's a book rental service. And no, this is a workshop, um, Sonia. I can get to that at the end, but I will need to work through the actual theory that we're going to be talking about today. And there isn't a quick, uh, you know, I won't be able to tell you how to promote your individual book site. I wouldn't be able to do that without spending some time analyzing your genre and so on. There is no one way to market a book site um, or a book. It's very, very specific. I will be talking about that, though, in general terms, if that is of interest. OK, so after we look at free writing and how to do it and what it is, um, that's very quick and easy. We will be talking about how a successful creative business works, what makes creative business different, what needs to be present in a creative business that's successful. And I really put an awful lot of time and thought into you know, honing that down into the most uh, compact and useful without oversimplifying to make it as simple as possible because there's an awful lot of over complexifying going on out there from people who kind of offer advice and it may be because they're used to dealing with bigger businesses or it may be because it's in their interest, the interest of their business to make it complex when it doesn't need to be. So we will talk about what's core. There are three things that are core to a successful creative business. It won't work if you don't get these right. And then we'll talk about how a, a successful creative entrepreneur thinks and works. And that's really the focus of what we're talking about today. It's about moving your, if you're not already in a good money flow, that means you're not fully thinking like a successful creative entrepreneur. You may be in some areas and some parts of your business, but not in others. So we're going to try and identify exactly where that shortfall might be happening. Hi, Jackie. Hi, James. You're very welcome. Great to have you here. And then if we have time, we will be looking at your definition of success and how you begin to design your business around how you define success. We'll be looking a little bit about how you manage time and money, if we have time for that, and, uh, and introducing the whole idea of creative practice and creative process. So I hope that gives you some idea of what to expect. I'm not sure at what point in time we'll, we'll sort of have to call um, done on this, but in terms of, of timing, but we pick it up again next month. So across 2018, by the end of the year, you'll fully have what you need in place and it will all be put together into one um, very useful user friendly, um, not course exactly, but just uh, one module after another, which will then be made available to you. All right, then. So uh, let's talk a little bit about last time and the various um, blockages and yeah, creative business block and the various ways in which it can show up. So block number one, uh, we talked about these are the people who 
actually don't really know what they want to create. And that's more common than people um, often appreciate. You know you want to, you know, you know you're a person who must love what they do. You've tried various jobs where you don't have that experience. Um, you know you need to do that, but you're not quite sure how to shape up this business, either in terms of you don't know what your niche is or you don't have a clue even perhaps what area you want to work in, but you do want to be a creative. You do want to work from that sense of passion and purpose. Block two, uh, you do know but you can't get going for some reason. You just don't know why. You can't actually move off the starting box. Block three is when you did start, um, but you fizzled out for some reason. And block four is connected to that. You stop, you stop regularly. So you have intermittent bouts of creative activity. And I'm talking, when I talk about creative activity here, I'm talking about creative business activity. So when I'm, I'm talking, you always have to think about the various levels of your business. I'll be talking about that in a minute, the three levels. So when I'm talking about not getting going, fizzling out, stop starting, I'm actually talking not just about your craft, whatever that might be, but I'm talking about the actual processes and the actual entrepreneurial part of your business. You do it for a while, but you don't keep it up. Um, you, you know, you have successful um, dry spells, feasts and famine, that kind of thing. And I call those four, those first four, they're kind of the stoppers. They're, they're people who are blocked in the sense of being stopped. And then there are those who are blocked in the sense of struggling, just not where you want to be. Uh, so you may have some success, but your projects perhaps are underdeveloped. That's block five. You don't quite um, hit the nail with, with your products, with your services. Um, with the actual craft itself. It's you're putting out one underdeveloped thing after another. That is a common form of block. Another one is that you're doing the wrong work. You're doing shadow work. You know, you want to be a writer, but you're an editor. You want to um, do some form of business, but you've chosen the wrong people to, to reach out to. And block seven came out of feedback from last time. Um, and it was one that I missed. And, you know, quel surprise, it is actually my own. It's where I tend to fall down myself when I do fall down. And that is doing too much or too much doing uh, more accurately. We'll be talking in a, in a minute about the importance of just being to the creative and leaving that space. So, but um, because I didn't discuss this one last week, if you want to know more about any of those blocks, it's in last month's session. So you can go back and explore if you feel, you know, there's one of those is you and you want to go into it in a little bit more detail. It's, it's there in last month. But this month, just because I didn't mention this one last time and um, too much doing, you know, an awful lot of creatives are very, very, very busy, but they're not making any money. Uh, they're running around doing things they sh either shouldn't be doing or they love doing or whatever, but they want more than anything to make their living from, from what they do but they are doing the wrong things is block six. This is slightly different. They're just doing too many things and haven't selected. So struggler last time, very good question from um, Julie. So you had struggler last time. Is that now merged with underdeveloped projects? Got, um, from the feedback we got from last time, Julie, I came to kind of realize that struggling is something that takes a few different forms. And so rather than making it a block in and of itself, struggling isn't really a block. What struggling is a sign that you are blocked. And so I broke them down now into the people who can't get going at all or, or almost can't, you know, get going so seldom that it doesn't really count that they're inactive, they're just kind of stuck. That's one type of one category of block, if you like. And the second one then is struggling becomes three different types, either the undeveloped project person who is putting out stuff that isn't quite right or isn't directed enough. The person who's doing the wrong things, uh, you know, actually in the wrong niche 
or the person who is just doing too many things and therefore not doing anything well enough to actually develop income from it. Does that make sense to you? Um, if it doesn't, or if you have any other questions about that, please do pop them in there. Hi, Shelley. Thank you for joining us. Great that you're here. Okay, so yeah, it does make sense. You're definitely doing too much. Yes. Okay, well, you are not alone, my dear. You are not alone. There are a lot of people doing too much. And, you know, it's a way of, it's another way of avoiding. So one of the core things we're going to be talking about today is how to get out of that trap of the, do, the doing trap. Okay, so um, I asked you to bring pen and paper and I will always ask you to bring pen and paper to these workshops. Um, we are going to use a technique that many of you have used with me before. I'm just going to run through it very briefly because it's not complicated. If you want to know more about it, there will be a full book devoted to this magic technique um, as part of the Go Creative series, but you don't need to know very much about it to do it. You only need to know the following. When I say go, or when I give you an exercise topic, I would like if you would write as fast as you possibly can. And write in a very raw way, so you forget about grammar, spelling, punctuation, and you forget about what you're, you, you would like to say, and you kind of open up to what is actually there. It's, it's a reverse kind of writing where you, almost like take dictation, listen to what's rising for you, from the things that I'm saying here in this workshop, and particularly when I'm talking about money. Money is a fantastic symbol for deeper stuff. Money is nothing, it's empty energy. And so we project a huge amount of stuff onto it. And free writing can be a really great way of finding out why, for example, you're struggling, why you're doing too much, why you know you can't get going. Free writing can really help us to get to the why, but we don't go looking for that. We do the opposite. We stop thinking and we just let the pen move. We just write as it says there. Um, free is fast, raw and exact and easy. I'm not going to even talk about exact and easy this time. We can get to that another time because I'm just keen to get to the actual nuts and bolts of the workshop today. So um, we will look in a few moments, I'll be asking you to actually do some free writing. And then if you have any queries or questions about it, you can uh, pop them into the comment box. Okay, so let's just talk a little bit about what it is to be a creative in business. And in as we go forward in the, the series of workshops, there is a double thing that's happening, which is symbolized by this illustration here. These two people, this jigsaw that needs to fit together. And there is also a triple thing, which some of you we have discussed before, and we'll get to that in a moment. But just first of all, looking at this jigsaw here, what it is to be creative and what it is to be in business and then trying to bring those two together. Okay, I want you to think about that through free writing. So I'm going to ask you now to write down, what does it mean to you to be creative? Go. Keep writing and writing a little faster. Just speed up the writing. What does it mean to you to be creative? Final time, last couple of seconds. What does it mean to you to be creative right faster?
Okay, just put down your pen now. And could I have a comment or two from a brave soul who would like to share with us what it means to be creative as far as you are concerned? What does that mean to you? Or did you all just go off and pour yourself a glass of wine? Anybody? Next time out, we're going to be talking about creative principles and the sorts of creative, you know, the principles that apply no matter what um, we are creating. So, um, we, you know, we look at this in detail, but each of us also has our own sense of what it means. So we're starting to, to get some um, answers in here and these uh, give us some sense. So Justine, for her, it's a sense of no structure. Um, Julie talks about self-fulfillment, a sense of joy and a sense of feeling alive. Debbie talks about giving free reign to the imagination. Um, Suzanne talks about creating something where there was nothing before. Debbie, to set my own rules and to break other people's rules if I want to. Living life in your own time. Time is a really interesting one, which Justine has come up with here. And Justine has loads. She, here's another one. Helping others, surprising yourself and making something new and having fun. And for JJ, it's about writing, writing in many genres, um, having the ability to cross genres, science fiction, comedy, and then also to do music. So these are some fantastic ideas around what creativity means to you. And as I said, there are certain creative principles and we'll talk about what they are next time. But it, in a way, it doesn't matter because, as Debbie said, there are no rules and often creativity is about breaking the rules. So even those principles can be explored and often there's an exception that proves the rule and so on. Caroline is coming in here to talk about thinking freely, communicating openly, understanding and being understood, being who she was meant to be, her true self, doing her being. And Justine, again, feeling energy coming out of nowhere. So these are powerful concepts. These are hugely attractive things to us. And very often we are attracted to a creative activity or, um, or any activity for the joy of the creation itself. And that's something that we very often overlook. So it's really great to get a sense of what it means to you. Almost always when people talk about, you know, when I get responses to this question, it almost always includes freedom, breaking boundaries and imagination. There are three aspects that you, you get and then things like variety and abundance and, and all the other things that you've been talking about here come in as well. So now, using your pen and paper again, and in a moment I'm going to say go, and when I say go, this time I want you to write even faster than you were writing already, and I will then say stop when you are to stop, okay? So um, really writing fast. I want to ask you, what does it mean to be in business? Go. To you. What is it to be in business? Write fast. Just write, don't think. And a little faster. What is it to be in business as far as you're concerned? What does it mean to you? Faster.
Last few seconds, even faster. What does it mean to be in business to you? Right fast. Okay, so if you could just come through with some of your feelings about what it means to be in business. Hi, Sari, am I pronouncing that properly? Um, thank you for joining us. We are talking about going creative in business and how to move from business block into money flow. And at the moment, we're using a technique of free writing, writing very fast, writing raw, fast as we can to uncover answers to some questions about what it is to be creative and what it is to be in business. So when we talked about what it is to be creative, we got lots of stuff around freedom, imagination, abundance, energy, becoming oneself, self-actualizing, um, making something new, crossing boundaries, breaking rules. Now we're looking at what it means to be in business. Um, so for Debbie, it's about focusing on what customers want to buy rather than what you want to make or produce. Uh, for Justine, it's about being grown up and also about focusing, about enabling yourself and others, interestingly, to make money. Um, for JJ, it's about making money, helping to support um, children, I think, support the family, I presume he means. Um, for Debbie, again, focusing on bottom line, jettison, uh, what doesn't contribute towards profitability. Okay, really good and interesting stuff here. Um, for Justine, business is turning your fiction into reality, which is very interesting. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Good to have you here. Uh, Julie, business means able to succeed on my own terms, proving myself, building a future out of what I love doing, asserting my independence, finding a way to help others, creating something out of nothing while doing what I love. Justine, it's about giving credibility to your thoughts. I, um, I'm guessing there, Justine, that you possibly mean money gives that sort of credibility and validation, but um, correct me if I'm wrong in that. Changing lives uh, through business is another one for Justine. For Susan, freedom. Freedom comes in on the business front, doing things my way, making money. Hello, Sam. Yes, we are talking about moving from business block into money flow the creative way. So we've been talking, we've been using a technique called free writing, which I use, use a lot. And we're exploring what it means to be creative and what it means to be in business. So one of the things that's interesting, not for all of you, but for a number of you, um, oh, for Sam, it's proving to herself. So that's, I think, similar to, to Justine, which is the kind of money is the great reckoner. Money is a measure. It actually is something identifiable. You can say, yes, you know, I did it. Um, whereas when we're in creative mode, it's imaginative and you can't, you don't necessarily always know, or you don't have that measure necessarily always, though you can do, of course. Um, and for Justine, it's not just about money and it's about seeing people benefiting also. And that's the creative business. <laughs> and there's love across the workshop there between um, Justine and Sam. Hi, Henry, you are welcome. For Rana, it's about being in charge. One of the things that's interesting here um, is that there is a talk, you know, quite a bit of talk about focusing and narrowing and measuring and thinking about what the customer wants and looking at the bottom line and so on. So third and final exercise on this part of um, the series I would like you to just talk about the tension. Is there any tension for you, for you personally, between, and again, I stress with free writing, don't tell the page, let the page tell you. You just open yourself up to what's there. If you write fast enough, that will automatically happen. 
And the, uh, is there a tension, is there any tension for you between those two things? The creative, which sounded so free flowing, imaginative, abundant, energetic, and so on. The business, do you feel a sense of narrowing or does it, or not? Is there any other tension? This is the one that I'm kind of highlighting, which came out of some of the words were offered here, but there are other tensions between creativity and business as it is defined in our culture, but also possibly as it is defined in your own head and possibly as it needs to be. So tension between what it means to be creative what it means to be in business. Is there any for you? Go, write fast, fast as you can. Hi, Deborah, good to have you here. And Dorota, oh, great to have you here. And Philippa also. So keep writing in your notebooks as fast as you can. Any tension between creative and business for you. Please write faster. and a switch finish the sentence you're working on around the tension between the two and now switch into the opposite is there a point at which it becomes congruent the creativity aspect and the business aspect where the two come together and you get more than the, you know the whole is more than the sum of its parts is there a place where creativity and business really come together for you in a way that feels expansive If you're finding you can't think what to say, keep writing, I can't think what to say until something else emerges on the page. Please do handwrite the answers to these questions. Otherwise, you're just going to get top mind surface responses and it's not a creative response. And finally, back again to tension. Any tension between creativity and business? Just 30 more seconds on that. Please write faster. JJ's typing, can't write with pen and paper anymore. That's absolutely fine if it's something you can't do. Um, I like handwriting because it's for various reasons, but if you can't do it, of course you can't do it. Okay, we just stop there. We'll just stop there for a moment and uh, put down your pens and take a, a bit of a breather. Um, and I'd like to hear from somebody who was kind of surprised by something that emerged on the page. So if you if you could leave a comment in the comment box, if there was anybody who was surprised, perhaps you all, you know, that wasn't an experience and that's fine too. But if, if any of you were surprised by something that emerged that you didn't know was there, if you like, it would be great to hear about that. So what we're doing here, what we're doing with, with the free writing and what we're doing as we explore this is, you know, creatives are not very good in business as a rule. 
business is really hard as well. It, people completely underestimate how hard it is. Most businesses, most small businesses are struggling. They're not doing too well. And most authors are not making much money. And most creatives are not making much money. And there are very clear and identifiable reasons for this. And a huge amount of them are related to how we are taught, first of all, creativity itself and how to be creative and you know we're taught and raised through a an education system which doesn't know how to do that very well at all unless you've been to art school and even there sometimes it's 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 kind of weird it doesn't really translate and the second thing is that people don't understand that creativity is just a state and a process and it can be applied to anything but we very much label things and, and put them into boxes and keep them separate. But we now know through neuroscience and the ability to actually map the brain and see what it is doing when it is doing various forms of thinking, problem solving, creativity, and all the different ways in which you can be creative is also another confusing aspect. But we do know that it is really just a state and it is really just a process. It's not um, anything in, in to do with just writing or just music or just art. So um, in terms of thinking about um, the tension between the two, um, so we have one person who thought that connecting with other people is something that happens in business but it's hard when you're creative and you like doing things in your own time and in your own time frame and also something that comes in there a lot is the need for solitude can if your business is a people related business and business by definition is pleasing somebody it has to be fulfilling a need for somebody um, if it's a, and you are also a creative who in order to cre be creative around your business or around the content of your business needs time and solitude and to, to go on your own, that's attention. Um, we have somebody else who said, I dislike the business side, but I discovered it's because the business takes me away from creativity. And I guess what we will be exploring here, Susan, around that is actually applying the creative, the same creative principles that you bring to whatever your creative activity is, I believe yours is writing, and um, that you bring that to business. Uh, Debbie talks about creativity and business as being opposites, but says, actually, if I got the business side of things right, it would be a fantastic reward for successful creativity. So perhaps they're not such unlikely or unnatural bedfellows after all. And Justine is agreeing with what Susan had. So this is a conversation that will go on. It doesn't finish here, but it's really important for you to kind of one principle on which everything that we do from here on forward is going to be based is that all the things you associate with the creative, all the things that you associate with creativity, all the things that you associate with imagination, all the things that you associate with um, that side of yourself, that state, that process can be applied to money and can be applied to the business of offering your craft, your product, your goods, your services, your offering, whatever it may be. It can be applied to that and offered out to the world in a way that uses your creativity just as much as the actual content of the business, the business itself can become a creative entity. And that's what we're going to try and make happen here. And that's why we need in these workshops to go a bit deeper than the normal sort of um, business advice that you get in more conventional um, circles, because it doesn't really go in at that level. It does. It too sees creatives as flaky and you know, not able to deliver and all those kinds of, you know, the, the creative stereotypes. So that, you know, we've been talking lots and lots about that, but one principle, and as I said, there are no rules, but there are certain key principles. And one key principle that we'll be working from here is that that is possible. If you truly believe that's not possible, if in your free writing, you know, everything that you said led you, leads you to feel now, actually, no, I cannot do that around uh, money and business and so on, then perhaps these are not the books or the workshops for you. 
but because that is what really they are all about. It's all about that. Um, and so if it doesn't make sense to you and it doesn't make sense to everybody and it's not possible for everybody, that's absolutely fine. Now is the time to kind of say, OK, that's not really for me. Um, but if it does excite you, if it does feel to you like that is possible, um, or at least that you would like to explore whether whether it is possible and you can see the value in it, then maybe stick around for another little while. Okay, so um, let's just have a look then at the three dimensions of a successful creative business. And some of you have done these before, but you can't hear it often enough. So I talked earlier about the two sides, the business and the creative side kind of there and how we will bring those together and we will. But when you're looking at your own creative business, across the week, across the month, across the year, across the business itself, you have to take three things into account. Um, as we discussed it in, I think it was the January workshop or maybe the February one, you have to wear three different hats. One is the creative crafter. So that's the person who actually produces the, the goods that are on offer. So if you're a marketeer, it's the actual service that you offer. If you're um, a coach, it's the session with the client and your particular way of approaching um, life challenges or work challenges. If you're a writer, it's getting the words on the page. If you're um, a visual artist, it's a painter. It's about putting paint on canvas. That is the craft. That is why what a lot of us are here for. You know, we, we want to create a creative business around this, uh, whatever this craft is that we love and want to get better at. If we're an activist, it's it's lobbying and putting pressure on politicians or doing some, you know, way out crazy stunts that change how people think and so on. It's the craft itself. Then there is the creative direction. There is, um, and this is very much about the processes in your business. And it's not about tools. People, we get very hung up on individual tools and tools are fantastic. And there are great tools that can give us great shortcuts, but we don't think enough about processes. How do I get my stuff out the door? How do my people buy my stuff? How do I, you know, make it all as time-free as possible? How do I create my offering in a way that it's scalable, that I'm not tied to hours for, um, you know, money for hours done, where it is actually really a business and not a, um, you know, a freelancing operation, which is, of course, a very valid thing to do, but it's not a business, it's not the same thing. And then the third aspect is the growth, the expansion, and that's the, the creative entrepreneur. So every so often we have to take off our crafter hat, and we have to take off our director hat, and we have to put on the entrepreneur hat and actually think about how we're going to expand, grow, reach more people, and so on. And all the time, you've got to be thinking about those three. If you're just making stuff and putting it out there, it's not going to work. If you're not crafting regularly, though, and you're just concentrating on processes and um, it's not going to work. And if you're just thinking, which um, an amazing number of people do, just think about marketing and reaching people and saying, but haven't actually got the product in place or haven't got the processes in place. Well, obviously, it's not going to work. So um, you need to be all of these things you need to be. And this is why not a lot of people manage to do this, because it's a balancing act. It's hard enough to be a good crafter, whatever your field is, to be good enough these days in any field, to be good enough to get attention, to be good enough to, to get sales is in and of itself a big achievement. It's difficult to be a good business director, a good creative director of a creative business is not something that is that easy. A lot of us neglect it. Don't put attention on the business itself. Work in the business, crafting away on our stuff, but not on the business and the actual processes that make it work for us. And similarly, the entrepreneurial side can be very challenging, putting yourself out there, making partnerships, you know, and making publications your own where you tell people what you're about or working with other publishing partners to get your message out or whatever ways that you are growing your business. It's definitely a challenge to 
to balance those three. And Deborah's coming in to say it's difficult juggling all three with three different creative talents. And this is where she is coming unstuck and she is not alone. And, um, you know, I'm hopeful that the method that we are going to be learning over these um, coming months is actually going to help you to come unstuck, Deborah, and, and other people too. So I'm going to finish off this evening just uh, thinking about you again, bringing it back to you and your definition of success and how you're going to design your business around that definition. And this, again, is something that we talked about in earlier workshops. Everybody, every creative has their own definition of success. Uh, money will be in there. If you, if you don't have a money flow going through your business, you don't have a business. You have a hobby. And there are lots of hobby businesses on the high street. And there are lots of hobby businesses in the creative world. You know, they're not actually providing a living and that is fine if that's what you want that's absolutely fine but a lot of hobbyists are fooling themselves that they are in business and uh, so one sign of success will be your money and um, definitely but you will have other definitions of success so if we could just stop for this is just a list so i don't want you kind of writing full sentences but just list five things that if at the end of this year you've put some of these principles into place and you are successful just list five ways you'll know that what will you be doing what will what will be out there what what will have changed besides you know earning a ton of money that's the obvious and the easy answer but you know in order to earn that money other things will have to happen so what do they look like can we have a list please Five things, five ways you would know that you were successful. You would say, yes, I am thrilled this happened. If you have five, give me another one. If you don't have five, try to get to five. Even if you're not quite sure and something is rising, just put it down. We won't hold you to it. Okay, you can put the pen down again. Um, Justine has a really good question. Do you think there's a problem that people often work on their own? Would it be better to have someone wearing each of the hats? So for example, three different people, you know, one to do the entrepreneurial tasks, one to do the director tasks, one to do. And the answer to that is yes. Um, it's if you can get three people working together and each one works to their strengths, then you get more than three times the energy. It definitely explodes it. Um, there are a couple of, of issues with that. One is that creatives often don't want to work with other people. And they may have one trusted other, sometimes three. Uh, you know, a third party in a business makes a huge difference in any business if you get that third function coming in. But what creatives are tending to do, rather than having the, the individual person in, you know, in charge of and the three people you know, sharing the um, income and the assets and, the, and um, the dividends or whatever in the business, what creatives are tending to do is hire assistance for the aspects of the business that they're not strong in. And that will be a whole session that we'll do in a little while because that is actually the key. Uh, that is where you can't do all of these three, but you do need to understand them and you do need to kind of grapple with them a little bit and understand their function in your business before you're in a position to hire. If you start hiring assistants before you fully understand how to make money in your business, then you're just going to waste money. And you, you can learn about it the hard way like that. And, uh, you know, lots of us have. <laughs> but if you actually work it out in advance, you've got a much better chance of getting that right. And indeed of recognizing if there is that soul sister or brother who would be the perfect person to work with to come, came into your life. You would know them. You would know what you need if you've actually thought and engaged with this and tried to make it happen. So a lot of what we're doing with this, these creative workshops is we're trying to embed the knowledge in a place that isn't in your head. 
it's actually at a deeper level because that's where the creative stuff happens and that's where it rises. So we think too much about these things. They don't, that doesn't work very well for us. We need to kind of engage with it and do a bit of learning by doing and from that stuff arises. Deborah is is looking at implementing new marketing strategies, which is something we had discussed before, which is great. OK, so um, I am actually going to leave it there. I would if anybody has any questions, um, I'm coming on to the whole issue of managing time and money. And to be honest, we're almost an hour in now and this is too big. So I'm going to leave this one for next time. We will look very closely at the whole issue of your time, your money and your other resources and how you tap into the uh, abundant, imaginative, free-flowing kinds of things that you talked about when you thought about creativity, how we can apply this to money and how we can apply it to time. And in order to do that, you'll find there's something you need to let go. And we'll talk about that and we'll look at that as well. So anybody got any questions? Oh, here's jo uh, Justine's given us her five. Cool. I'm going to read them out. My five. Someone else full time helping in the business, the parts that I'm not running. People join up for other reasons other than events. Reading about by the book in the press, being invited somewhere cool to speak, get my own book out. It would show I had time to do something else as well. Fabulous. Fabulous. OK. Um, other definitions of success or any questions for me before we go? Just to say to you that these workshops happen generally on, <laughs> yeah, she got six. Um, these workshops happen on the first Tuesday generally. Um, tomorrow uh, I had a time clash, so it's here on Monday instead. But every month, 6 p.m. London time on my Facebook page. If you want an alert for the next one, you'll need to like the page. That then tells you when I'm going live. And you might also want to sign up for the Go Creative um, Motivator, which you would find on my website. And if you sign up, it's up the top um, sign up box across the top of every page of the website, which is ornaross.com. If you sign up for that, you will get a free um, book, but you'll also get a Monday motivator, which will kind of keep you on track and thinking about these things through the month. And you will get um, an advance uh, alert as to you know when the next one is happening so it looks like we don't have any questions you're all very happy um i am going to leave it there um unless anybody is hopping in no okay all right then so we will leave it there until next month when we'll talk in more detail about time and money and a couple of other things if we have time um thanks julie and thank you all for being here um, last time, a few of you hopped on to private message about stuff that you didn't want to share in the comments box, which is absolutely brilliant. Do that anytime. Or if you have, if you want to email me at info at I answer them as they come in in order. If, if there's a lot of mail, sometimes it takes a few days for me to get back to you. But um, I will get back to you if you have a, a genuine issue. And certainly if you're a workshop attendee, um, that's really important to me because your feedback really helps me to get this right. And I'm putting together a workbook, which I hope will actually lead people through this process. So everything you can tell me about what's happening for you is really, really useful for me and through me, hopefully to other people as well. So thank you, folks. Um, yeah, have a great month and make great things. Think about business, uh, think about money, love money, welcome it in and have a think about the tensions, the place where they arise and ways in which they, you know, you could melt them. I can really recommend that you should free write every day. I do. And it really helps to um, keep moving, keep, keep the flow going around money as well as everything else. OK, folks, thank you very much. See you next time.